Spending just over three weeks alone on a remote island above the Arctic Circle in Norway is an experience that I really never thought I would have. Um, having the time and the space to create music and get creative all alone without any distractions from the outside world is a luxury. There's been an experience kind of being in the dark um, for the majority of the day. Just, you know, one hour where you can go out and see what's outside, what's around you, what I can get up to. And then the rest of the day is just dark, so I'd have to get my head torch on and walk home for over half an hour, get back to my cabin and all you could do is write. Being surrounded by the beauty of this island, Ceylon. While staying on the island, I met some truly wonderful people um, who were not short of stories and really were eager to share their experiences and their tales, which is, you know, one of the reasons why I went out there in the first place. Did you ever go to um, I'd walk over to the only shop on the island, which is run by Andrea and Mary Lou, two wonderful, wonderful people. Um, and as you go in the shop, as you walk up, there's actually a load of reindeer just outside, including the tiniest, cutest reindeer you will ever see, called Pepper. Very, very small reindeer who, um, I, yeah, I definitely fell in love with. <laughs> um, and as you go in the shop, there's a huge table covered in maps. It's also the place where all the locals would meet, especially on a Saturday. They'd have free coffee and free waffles. There's just a kind of bowl of waffle batter that you'd chuck into a waffle iron and and there's loads of lovely cheeses on the table and jams and creme fraiche, all these things. And you'd sit down, help yourself to free coffee and just chat to the locals. Hello. Hello, Jodie. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, I'm just calling because the light is really beautiful, but it will be gone in like an hour or so. So I just wanted to ask if you want to drink coffee in the mountains or something. I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can leave. Well, I can leave now. I just need to get changed and it'll take me about half an hour to walk to you. Yeah, okay. yeah, perfect. And uh, should I meet you by the shop? Yeah, do you want me to bring anything? Um, no, no. Or you can bring some coffee if you have a, what's it called, thermos, flask. Yeah, Also, there's supposed to be a storm coming tomorrow, and it's like 40 meters per second. So here it's classed as a what? orcan, or what do you say, hurricane? <gasps> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so oh maybe. My, what, what am I gonna do with that? <laughs> <laughs> maybe do some shopping today, just in case. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'll get some firewood in as well. It keeps me warm. <laughs> yeah, get some candles, get some wood, and uh, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Oh, we can talk about that when I see you because I have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, see you soon. Okay, I'll leave now and I'll meet you there shortly. Yay, bye. Okay. Bye, bye, have it. Have it. Jodie's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks 
very weak. Oh my. Oh no. Mm. When I was applying for the funding, I thought I didn't want to use the experience that I had to write specifically about the island and my experiences. I just wanted to use the space as a artistic stimulus to just write how I would normally write and it didn't have to be about snow and the cold and all these amazing new uh, experiences I was feeling. I just wanted to, it to spark something in my brain that would make me write either in a different way or the same way I usually do. Uh, which did happen, but actually the thing that happened that surprised me the most was that I just felt I couldn't not write about what I was experiencing while I was there. So I ended up writing a six-track EP, Polar Night, and I just felt like this, the place was just calling out to be sung about. I've never experienced cold like uh, a, like I did in the Arctic Circle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it's cold. It's frozen. <laughs> I travelled with Göril to a place further inland called Karoshok which is where the Sami government is. And we went there to meet a couple called Arvid and Anna, Anna Ravna, who took us out on, well, up to the top of a mountain. It took about an hour and a half each way, being pulled by a snowmobile in a sled filled with reindeer hides. I was actually really warm. <laughs> um, and we got pulled to the top of the mountain where all of Arvid's reindeers were. And it was the 22nd of January. And it's said that the 21st of January is the first time that the sun will rise above the horizon. So while we were there, we were having coffee. He was telling us about the reindeer and, you know, how they use the reindeer, what they do with the reindeer, how they look after the reindeer. Um... And there was some Sami families there, some little kids that were huddled around a fire playing amongst the reindeer. Uh, they lit a fire in the snow. It was just, it was so magical. And he was telling us tales of his work. And we'd basically gone to work with him for a day. So while it's light, he goes this mountain top. And because it was the 22nd of January, the sun rose just above the horizon. It peaked above for about five minutes and then left us. I can see the sun hitting the lens of the camera. So it's actually yeah, really there. Look at the sun rays. And it was the most amazing view or sight I've seen. I feel like there were a lot of moments on this trip that just will stay with me forever. You know, when I being home in Pembrokeshire we take for granted that we see the sun every day. <laughs> uh, even if it's behind a load of clouds, you still have that light. But there, they some of them hadn't seen the sun since November. It's a long time to go in the pitch black. So seeing that, being around people who hadn't seen it since November was an overwhelming experience and we definitely all shed a tear on the top of that mountain that day. <laughs> I spent some time in a um, a lava, which is kind of like what we'd call a teepee tent kind of structure with a fire in the centre. And I learnt about the Sami um, traditions surrounding what they would do in lava, how you had to be invited in. Um, not everyone was allowed in. You'd have a specific place where you had to sit. Everyone had their place, like hierarchy within the lava.
and I sat and listened to Anna Ravna say stories about the Sami um, and how, about their history, how there was so much suppression and how they're, how they're fi almost fighting back, how they, they have their own Sami government and teaching people the ways, their ways and their history and their language. And it really is a beautiful language. And just being in that, that lavo that day felt really, I felt very uh, lucky to have had that experience because I got the impression that that's not something that would happen so openly with just anyone. I was really lucky with the people that I met on the island and the artist residency, Arvid and Arna, the reindeer herders, Mary Lou and Andre from the shop, um, Gurel being there taking videos and photos with me, Reno Engdahl for the, the, for the photos, um, and also to Maretta, Turgir, Anna, for having me there and for looking after me so well um, when they joined us for the ice fishing and cooked a beautiful, beautiful meal. Um, and just the whole experience of being, being on the island, I feel very, very lucky that I had the chance to experience that and meet these wonderful people who shared their stories and their culture and heritage with me. And I was able to tell them about, you know, my Welsh heritage and how there's some similarities and how our languages was suppressed. They seemed to be uh, interested in my Welsh heritage too. <laughs> and it's kind of, it's made me more, it's made me appreciate my culture a lot more. Obviously, I'm very proud to be Welsh and I'm proud that I can speak my own language. Uh, but it's definitely given me more, it's made me more hungry to learn more about my own culture um, and my heritage and where I come from and the traditions that we hold uh, from, from meeting these wonderful people on Salem Island. <laughs> 